this meeting of the Education and Culture Committee. Councillor Callan Watts, would you offer me? Thank you. If you're able, please stand. Bow with me. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time that we're able to spend together before we separate out into our families and our communities to celebrate our holiday season this year. Watch over those who are in need. Uh, the holiday times are a great struggle for so many, uh, especially this year with the economy and the things that have uh, taken its toll on the state of Oklahoma and the Cherokee Nation. Give each of us the strength to weather those storms and come together and find the celebrations in life that bring our families and make our families strong to, to be through the hundreds of years that we've spent in surviving as a Cherokee Nation. Watch out for those who are overseas uh, fighting for our freedoms, may, that they may have a happy holiday season and come home safely to each of, each of our communities and their families. Be with us as we travel. Thank you and amen. Amen. <coughs> Next we have a roll call. Jerry Yucco, here. Don Garvin. Buell Anglin. Here. Bill John Baker. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Hardy Besser. Here. Bradley Cobb. Joe Crendon. Here. Jody Fishinghop. Here. <coughs> Meredith Brady. Janelle Fulbright. Here. Chuck Hoskin. Here. Tina Gloria Jordan. Curtis Snell. Chris So. Here. David Thornton. Present. Kara Cowan Watts. Oh, honey. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the approval of the minutes of November 16th. I move to be approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And we will move to reports. And first we will hear from Career Services and Diane Kelly. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the Council, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to all of you. Um, we uh, have had an exciting week over at Talking Leagues. We had a five-member review committee that visited the center from Monday through Friday and uh, they were providing technical assistance in various areas from uh, our vocational trades and our academic area. Um, we are converting our classrooms over at the Job Corps into learning style classrooms so that uh, when you go in, if you happen to walk by, you might see some of the students sitting on the floor on carpet and they may be reading in one area or they may be working one on one with an individual or they may be working in a group of four. Uh, we found uh, through the learning styles concept that it has allowed our uh, performance ratings to go up and uh, Mona and I have been working on this and I've been doing some of the workshops for the teachers and uh, we are in the process of doing a timeline so that this time uh, next year we would be three-fourths of the way through it and by the May of 2010 hopefully we will have most of our classrooms in that area so that if you went in uh, in a learning styles concept, you've got students who prefer light to low light. You've got students who like it cooler or they like it warmer. And uh, these are things that in the learning styles concept, that if you can adapt to the styles and the environment for these kids, then you can help them with getting their scores to reading and math up. So that's some of the things that we're doing over there. Uh, our adult education classes have... Uh, received a rash of new students as a result of the day work program and uh, I'm uh, wanting to share this with you because some people were asking this I think some of you may have called about it the day work program is designed as a training program it is not looked at as a employment type program because some of these people are going to come into the day work program and they may only be there for maybe one to two days and so we have it classified as a day work training program so that it's more into the training, so that it's not where they'll have to have taxes held out. So <coughs> to clarify that. And um, we have uh, provided uh, you all with a copy of the bar chart. I believe it was you, Councilman uh, Buzzard, who had asked about that, how many we had served that were not uh, tribal members. And I believe many of us sent that out to all of you all was a bar and a pie chart. And hopefully we'll be able to incorporate that into our monthly report. Did you not get it? Did you get it? I got it. I don't know if it was sent out to everybody. Okay. All right. Well, it'll be in our it will be in our monthly report. Uh, 
Kelly Forrest uh, asked that I extend apologies. She and her students in NAVTEC for the last four years have been providing you all with uh, notepads at the holidays. And Kelly had surgery, and she won't be returning until next week. And uh, she's going to get them, but she said, tell them you'll be more for New Year's instead of the holidays. Uh, John Overack will have a flyer coming out about social skills and customer service training. He's working with the uh, West Salem Springs uh, facility, and this will be sometime in January that they're going to be uh, doing this training. Uh, we um, are using a degreed work, day work people to help us with the day work program. It's been working real well. Uh, we've uh, had some people that have had a lot of experience, and we're finding people their false find time sheets. Uh, we found some that uh, didn't show up at the work site, and then they come back around 4.30, and they're wanting their time. And so there's some signatures on here, so we're checking it. And uh, the day work people that we've got working for us have done an outstanding job. And uh, at some point in time, I'd like to bring them over and introduce them to you because they are good people. Uh, we've had a few of them that had some warrants, and uh, those we asked to go back and get those taken care of and get that cleaned up so that they could come back and we could help them with their job skills and get them placed. So, you all have any questions? Counselor Soap? Yeah, uh, Ms. Kelly, what, what type of uh, categories do you have in, uh, available in Mays County? I know there's a local church working with an individual that uh, has been interested in this program, and so I'm just curious as to uh, what type of categories you have there in, uh, in our county that, that uh, they might be able to. The, the day work program participants are assigned to Cherokee Nation facilities because of the insurance, right. and uh, we're not assigning outside of that. Now, we can our adult work experience program, and we will be able to do that with our youth program. And we have economic stimulus do dollars that we can work with youth up to 24 years of age. So we could place somebody possibly through that. Uh, what, time, what type of work is it, I think, is what they're asking? Uh, it's normally with a nonprofit entity. Okay. So and they would qualify. With, with people versus mm -hmm. manual type? Yes. Uh, stuff. Okay. Right, thank you. Would you like for somebody to follow up on that? Um, I'll, I'll give them the names to contact, depending on what uh, yeah, this person ends up wanting to do. Okay. Uh, we know that they uh, inquired about that. Okay. And uh, they had heard about the day work program. And I told them, I said, I think there's certain categories, depending on what uh, entities <coughs> you know, are available in the districts. And so I'm just curious as to what. If they're more interested in, in uh, I think, technical skills versus uh, you know, just working with you know, people. Okay. Are there any other questions? Councilor Hawkin. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I understand what you're saying about the uh, day work program it's training, that it's not considered wages, it's probably not considered earnings for the purposes of disqualifying somebody from unemployment. The, apart from that, if someone is on unemployment, their status as a recipient of unemployment benefits doesn't have any bearing, does it, on whether they're uh, getting the day work program? If they're eligible for unemployment, they're not eligible for our program. They're not eligible? No. So they have, they have to have exhausted their benefits? That is correct. Okay. All right. Other questions? That's it. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much, and happy holidays to you, too. Thank you. Next, we have the exec executive director's report from Dr. Morton. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon, council members. You have uh, our reports for the uh, month. If you have questions about those, I'd be happy to uh, respond to them. And then I have one other matter, if, if it is appropriate, to uh, discuss with you or provide some information to you. And then Verna Thompson has some a welcome announcement to make that will make uh, all of you happy. Okay. Just fishing on. Um, I was looking at one of the slides for Fort Buffalo and it talks about the cemetery surveys they're doing. How do I get a request? There's a cemetery now at the start of the mountain at the side wall that only four or five people know about. It's got, it's got some things that date back to the Civil War. <coughs> How do I make a request for somebody to go out there? Uh, just uh, to Gloria and I'll, I'll uh, make a note of that 
Okay, because it's not been kept out there. It's out there in the woods. Yeah, and there are a few of those little isolated places that no one knows about that that uh, still need to be touched upon. One of them is the Morton Cemetery. <laughs> it's right on the Arkansas line and hasn't been one buried there in the last hundred years. So. <laughs> yeah, so put the Morton on there too. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Counselor Watt. Thank you. Do you, when you get those requests, do you work with GPS or geodata services to GPS those, right? To, yes. So, okay. Right. So they're in our inventory. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, then the first item that I would like to uh, discuss with you, if you have not received calls from K-8 school administrators about their budgets, you will. Uh, I'm receiving calls on a daily basis because of all of the publicity concerning the uh, cuts in, in the budget. In other words, their appropriation, which they received in August, is being cut so much per month. And the next step will be to reallocate rather than cut each month to reallocate the total budget. Schools have been cut ranging from... Uh, $73 at Cleora to uh, more than $100,000 at some of the uh, larger schools. So that's just since August. That's August, September, October, and November. That's the cuts thus far. So I have a uh, report that lists the status of the K-8 school <coughs> and what uh, we as a nation have uh, provided it in the way of assistance uh, for the past several years. So, and that's just for your for your reading pleasure. You have another one. Yes. But the question will arise. Uh, I have requests from three schools at present of, hey, can't you help bail us out? Well, of course, uh, we could bail out two or three schools, but we can't bail out all those schools. And, of course, some of you um, do not have K-8 schools in your districts. And the other matter is um, Head Start with some welcome news. So. Good afternoon, everybody. We received notice uh, last week or the week before. Um, we uh, wrote an expansion application. We were notified that we will be funded, so we get 48 additional infants and toddlers. And we're so excited because it will be a, a cutting-edge practice. You know, public schools, any public school that you know of, probably doesn't have uh, service for infants and toddlers, but we are going to expand at uh, Jalakwa Public School and Salina Public School. And it's really a bittersweet initiative because the need was there, which means that there were, at the time that we wrote the grant for Jalakwa Public Schools, there were 70 pregnant teens enrolled in school. So we're happy to provide the services that will keep them in school to complete their high school education, in addition to providing parenting education and working with the entire family. But at Salina, uh, we were given a new facility, new to us, old to them because they moved to the brand new site. But it will be, uh, if I could liken it to the children's village, it will be a mini village, if you will, with uh, uh, 62 children there. There's, uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but uh, just to give you some real brief stats, uh, for this year we will get $1.2 million. By the time all is said and done in the two-year time frame, we'll be close to $2 million, and we have 17 additional contract staff that will come on board because uh, it is kind of uh, uh, part of the stimulus money. There is a time frame on it. I anticipate that it will continue, but who can really call that at this point? So uh, HR has asked us to do uh, contract staff. Um, the indirect cost will uh, benefit by close to uh, 100000 uh, That's always good news to the tribe. 
but we're excited because it means 48 more infants and toddlers and 17 staff. Uh, any questions about that? We are one, only one of two in Oklahoma that got the grant. Yes, George. I just want to thank you for inviting us up for that dinner the other day. Oh, you're welcome. Good. That's uh, tradition by now, so we'll just plan on it every year. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Next we have uh, cultural tourism, and we have uh, Travis Owens <coughs> and Steve Rush who are here for that presentation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Did everybody get our report? <coughs> Not, I brought some extras. I'll just highlight a couple things on our report, and then I wanted to close uh, showing our trade show video, which is basically a montage for our OCO commercial round two. It's basically some raw footage, some B-roll that we're going to hand out to uh, tour operators and uh, try to draw some tourism to the uh, Cherokee Nation. Uh, Springport exhibit design is currently underway. Uh, we're planning on installing the exhibits uh, in February, and hopefully we'll open the Springport in uh, mid to late March. Uh, we're looking to have our grand opening ceremony on the 23rd of March. You'll be seeing a save the date for that here pretty soon. Uh, Ross Cemetery restoration and uh, uh, trail system was completed in November. Uh, we're continuing to research uh, alternatives for our welcome center here in Tahlequah. Uh, we're currently looking at design alternatives for the gift shop in the lobby area. Uh, Tulsa Tourism recently took over the uh, uh, gift shop, so we're going to uh, revamp that and update a little bit. Uh, we're currently working on a restoration plan for the Cherokee Prison. Uh, project will be bid out in January. Uh, we were recently awarded a $150,000 grant to help fund the uh, uh, Cherokee Nation Capitals of Save America Treasures grant. Uh, Travis Owen, our construction project manager, uh, did a, put a lot of effort into putting that uh, grant application together, and we we're surprised to hear that we got that grant last month. Uh, it's, we're the only uh, program in Oklahoma that got the grant. There were over 400 applicants, so it's a pretty big thing. Uh, recently, wrapped, uh, in October, wrapped up our History After Dark promotion, which was one of our most successful uh, uh, projects to date. We sold out all of our tours. Uh, Dallas Morning News picked it up, so it was uh, out there uh, on all the, a lot of the news publications. Um, in uh, September, I attended, or excuse me, October, I attended the Governor's Conference on Tourism and the uh, Red Bud Awards, and we were awarded the uh, uh, Merit Award for the Best New Attraction, which was the Seminary Hall exhibit, and the uh, uh, brochure that we did, the 12-page brochure, we also won a Merit Award on that as well. In November, we attended the National Tour Association Conference to try to attract tour operators into the Cherokee Nation to attend our tours, and I brought a few of the pins that were handed out to the uh, uh, tour operators. They're made from restocked materials, so it's a pretty cool thing. I thought you guys would like one of those. And I'd like to close our trade show video, but if anybody has any questions about uh, our report, I'll take those now before we uh, play that video. Any yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing to partner with Celine Courthouse to help make sure that's moving forward instead of uh, complying with your plan? I'll let Travis answer that question because we're actually doing some uh, research. Yeah. We're actually uh, continuing to partner with the association. We're actually meeting with them on Wednesday to talk about. Um, right now, the Cherokee Nation has been handling a lot of the environmental work, and then we're going to meet this week uh, to kind of talk about next steps. What is the project? What's, it, what's going to be the use of the project? Things like that, so we can help them um, in terms of future treatments for the property. But they were meeting today, so I wasn't clear why you guys weren't engaged with that. Meeting We're meeting Wednesday with uh, the architects and then Lisa uh, to talk about. I don't know if there was another meeting besides that. Um, but there is a meeting on Wednesday with the architects and Lisa. Okay, I may have got the <coughs> dates. Whatever. So, are we? Is there still a budget to acquire land for projects and stuff to for expansion? On Cherokee Nation side, they do have uh, some land acquisition dollars. 
I don't know that they've uh, moved forward on any one acquisition now with any but then I'm still pretty concerned about like the acquisition opportunities around the Sling Courthouse to make sure that you know that's got suitable property for parking and those kind of things. Um, if we can help facilitate that, make sure that's moving. Yeah. We bring that to the table and just uh, talk to the nation manager resources about the acquisition. One one last question. Where's your Facebook stuff? We're working on social media right now. Still, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I know it's. Thank seems you. like it's easy. We'll get we'll get we'll pull okay. it out here pretty soon. Perfect. Thank you. Councilor uh, Hoskin. Um, I was looking at your economic development. You mentions winery tours. Um, I think I mentioned it before. There's a, at least one winery in my district, and I just want to make sure that your development reached out to District Nine. If you if it wasn't already on your radar screen. Which one is that? Summerside. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Are there other questions? Okay. I'm Principal Chief Chad Smith, and we invite you to visit the great Cherokee Nation. Program have any uh, 
rules in mind concerning limitations on depicting elected officials in cultural tourism advertising, particularly as we get close to an election? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I guess I'd recommend that to give that some consideration. It's a wonderful high production quality presentation. I think I'd be interested in hearing what the department's uh, views were on that. Are there other questions? Thank you. That's it. Thank you very much. I want to announce to everybody that the nurses are here. Uh, if anybody is uh, wanting an H1N1 vaccine, also, the council. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, moving to old business, there is none. Uh, we move to new business after that, there is none. Uh, the next meeting is scheduled for January 11th at 3 p.m. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chris, you notice it.